Welcome back to the Catalyst Podcast. Uh, we're with the Lou Everett Group, specifically Lou and Sherry. Um, if you have not listened to the first episode uh, with Lou and Sherry, definitely go check that out. Um, they have some great um, just tidbits so far, just the, looking at their background and, and just hearing their passion for what they've been through and, and you know, their heart for leadership. Uh, gets me going, and, and I hope it does you too. Uh, so here, as we go into this second segment, we we really I want to keep go, kind of going with the narrative um, where we kind of broke at the end of the first, which y'all were talking a bit about um, just some of I mean just dropping some great sound bites on um, you know the thought process of of leadership, how you obtain you know healthy culture, healthy transformation. Um, things like that. I know that's really at the core of what you guys do at the Lou Everett group. Um, so I would love to hear more about, you know, um, either kind of current things you're working on or maybe some, uh, you know, case studies or something like that that, re- that would really mm-hmm. highlight, um, you know, the impact that you guys are making. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, well, I love definitely. talking about about um, the clients we've worked yeah. with. Yeah, <laughs> we call we yeah we call our mm-hmm. we call our clients partners mm-hmm. because that's what we do. We partner with them in their success. If if they're not successful, we're not doing our job well, mm-hmm. and so we're partnering with them on that. Because you see, our method relies solely upon um, using our experience and our methods and our training to gather the information and to make sure we use the right questions to help our clients, our partners gain clarity from where they are now to where they intend to be. And I'll give, I'll, I'll use a, I'll use a, I have a couple of examples here, <laughs> uh, quite a few examples of, uh, of business owners that we've, that we continue to help because our retention, we don't lose, we don't lose partners. Um, we have seen our partners go, go from where they are, and then within six months to a year, gain a 200 to 400% increase in revenue and business growth. But because they put the work in and they followed the process, we've got one, uh, one of our partners, Suzanne, she, um, when she came to us, she uh, had, was running her business on her own. She was by herself, a solo entrepreneur through and through. So she was ultra micro small. We worked we have a heart for solo entrepreneurs and, uh, that are looking to get build their business where they have employees. We love that. Uh, generally, within starting with about three years in business, about and then two to three years, and then we will go all the way up to the to the C-suite corporate level. Okay. But uh, Suzanne came to us and she was. I want to be. She'll say it, but uh, really out of sorts. Her <laughs> business was picking up. Yeah. But she had uh, challenges with organizing priorities based upon what to take care of first. This is all new, right? These are things you don't really necessarily learn until you go through it. Mm -hmm. Uh, She was getting really busy where she needed to hire at least a part-timer, but she didn't feel she had the money, money to do with the funds, but she had no choice because she had so much work to do. So she wasn't sure how she'd be able to make payroll. And by the way, she really wasn't paying herself. She wasn't making enough money to do that. Yeah. But she invested in herself and came to us for business coaching and consulting. And within, when she started with us, she had a client base of four people. She had four clients, four. Hmm. And within four months, she doubled that. Within six months, doubled it again. She's been with us now. We looked at this almost three years and she's got over 30 clients. Hmm. One full-time person, and she's hiring, wants to hire two more part-time individuals. She has more, she has increased her profit by 500%, and her business growth has, has drastically changed. Yeah. Now, mind you, she's put a lot of work into this. Mm-hmm. She's followed the process. She's been consistent, and she's the one that realized, I need a coach. Mm-hmm. There's something that I think that Sherry and I would have done way back in 2005 when we started our first business together, we'd have gotten a coach and we didn't. Um, But that's just one example of one of our partners that have seen significant change and growth in their life, not just in their business, but in their personal life too. Right. Because that's really where it begins. So that's one. Did you want to, did you have one you want to share? 
before you right. get into another story, I just yeah. curious because <laughs> I, I love that narrative, especially as I think through um, an individual, like a, obviously she's really good at what she does. Um, and y'all helped her unlock some things to kind of be able to have more capacity or, you know, whatever the case may be more scale. Um, as she starts to add to her team, that's a totally different dynamic, right? Right. Um, trusting people, educating. So what is what has that conversation been like um, for, you know, for her to like, not necessarily let go of the reins, but just kind of build out those responsibilities? Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, a lot of those, those conversations usually happen in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we did turn, because one of the very first sessions we have with any of our partners is, okay, where you are, where are you now? What does it really look like? What is it? What is, where do you want to be? Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's say 10 years, right? Yeah. Let, let's say what is, and, but not only where do you want to be, we're not talking about just regular goals here. What does it look like? And what does it feel like? Let's just imagine if you're already 10 years from now, highly successful in your business, what does that success look like to you? Mm-hmm. And we outline what that success looks like and what it is that you want to achieve in those, in that time frame. And then we begin to work backwards. Okay. So what steps do you have to take to get there? Mm-hmm. And then we begin to take one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. And with someone like Suzanne and any other solo entrepreneur or entrepreneur that may already have a team that needs organization, we still identify this. And then at that point, we begin to say, all right, well, guess what? You got to prepare for this, this, and this coming up. And in Suzanne's case, it was, well, you have employees, so there's a different dynamic there, right? And we had mm-hmm. conversations with her about mm-hmm. this. Okay, well, are you willing to separate your, look at your, you look at your business instead of looking at it as a baby, looking at it mm-hmm. as a machine. Right. <laughs> okay, because it's not your baby. Okay. If it's your baby, anyone who has children doesn't, don't want their kids to grow up, right? We don't want our children, <laughs> we want them to stay. Right. We don't want to vision them growing up. And they produce other things besides money. <laughs> That's right. It's a, it's a, don't look at it as a baby. It's a machine. So that means you have to treat it like a machine. Well, you got to look at yourself as the business owner mm-hmm. running XYZ service yes. or widget, gadget, whatever that you have. Uh, mm-hmm. So that, that is a huge uh, mind shift. And once you get that mind shift going, oh, I, I'm a business owner having this type of service then you look at it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's a huge mindset that I know I, I have, I've learned and tweaked and I was like, oh, there's a separation and it. it's just, yeah. it's just so different. And now she doesn't give, she doesn't have any trouble giving up some responsibility to their, mm-hmm. to her, to her uh, employees because it gets done and it gets done well. Yeah. Uh, and she has the ability then to focus on running the business as the owner mm-hmm. instead of the business running her. Yeah. No, I love how you kind of started to answer that question. We are basically saying like from the beginning, we're talking about current and future state so that when we get to those milestones, when we get to that point where, you know, things are unlocked or the capital is available or whatever it is, we right. don't then have to create the plan. Like we've already got the plan. We just execute. That's exactly it. Yeah. At least have the outline of the plan, right? We know yeah. it's going to come. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, any, any of our partners come to us, is we actually have another one that said, I think I got to hire somebody. But I don't know if I can afford it. Okay. Well, then how many clients do you have to bring in so you can afford to afford somebody, right? What, what do you have to do to bring somebody in mm-hmm. to do what you want them to do? Mm-hmm. Well, let's get there. So not only are they increasing their profit, they're increasing the size of their business by gaining new clients. They've reached a new pinnacle moment. Now they're able to bring in an employee and that, that routine will happen. Next thing you know, they're going to bring another employee in and then another employee in and another employee in. Um, I've got a client now. He, we had, we had him for, he, he joined up. He hasn't even been with us a full year yet. And he came in, he has one employee and he, uh, he's elect, he's a, they're electricians and he has one employee. Uh, it was a great employee. Um, and, uh, before meeting us, I think the company brought in about $60,000 a year that, that because only been in business two years. That led the year before we worked with him, 60,000 is what they bought in. Less than a year they're on track to make 150. Hmm. Not a lot of money, not a lot of money in a small business, 150 K, but they're on track, which means all they've got to do is make a couple other movements and they can double that or get close, close to doubling that this year already. Still hmm. fact of the matter is though, at 150,000 a year, that's more than double last year. Number one, hmm. number two, he keeps going on like that and doubling it every year within five years, there'll be a million dollar company. Hmm. 
Mm. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And when I mentioned that to him, he says, oh, my God, wow, that's great. Yeah, it's crazy. But that's where you wanted to be. Yeah. You see, and, and that's how that's how we help people get there. Yeah, that's awesome. So what else stands out about like your current approach? I, I'm curious to learn like how much of the I, I can't remember what you refer to. I don't know if it's compliance training or maybe more of the corporate training is, is kind of a broad category. Does that consume a lot of your focus or is that is that kind of a secondary thing or what, what would you char characterize as kind of the main focus? The main focus of our business. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, we have we have yeah. a, we have a couple couple of legs of our business. Um, okay. But being the co the business coaching side of it's a big one. That's a big that's a big thing for us. That consumes us. Um, uh, most of our space is the is the consulting and business coaching. Okay. Um, however, we do have a separate leg too for through the corporate training, including diversity and inclusion. Um, and so that that takes up I would say probably. 75, 25, right? Okay. More 75 coaching, 25 uh, right now currently. Uh, but again. A lot of times that's because of the last couple of years have been a little challenging, right? With COVID mm -hmm. and all this other, so the focus has been a lot on other things in the corporate environment, PPP and, you know, uh, how do we keep people in business? Uh, how do we keep our, our business together? How do we keep employee? All this stuff is like more of an emergency mm -hmm. uh, a, a reaction. And so not too many people consider up to this point have been considering corporate training. However, the floodgates have opened up. Yeah. Now we're yeah. starting to get calls. Now we're starting to get people we've connected with and say, okay, we got to get this back in gear. We got to get a coaching, mm -hmm. you know, and again, uh, something we could talk about another time, <laughs> but how a leader in a company responds to crisis can certainly determine the success of their business over time. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way that works with, pand with the pandemic or any crisis. And that's why we are who we are and why we do what we do. Because when crisis comes, we're ready to step up. We're here to help. Um, but, and we notice that there's a lot of, you know, people that are reacting versus being proactive. Mm -hmm, and it's unfortunate, you know, it, it's, a, it's unfortunate that they have to feel the pain. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, we have hammers throwing at everyone. And, you know, why is everybody angry? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's go back and figure that out. Because guaranteed, uh, there was some red flags, but they just chose to ignore it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we we love working with individuals that at least have a glimmer, the glimpse of I know I need to do this and mm -hmm. I know I need to build, uh, but I just don't know how. And they're mm -hmm. open minded. That's right. And then they're just ready. and they're ready. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think anybody's really ready necessarily, but you know, at least they're open minded mm -hmm. uh, right. to the fact that like, hey, I need something. I just don't know how or why because it's not my wheelhouse. And mm -hmm. then get them to that next level. Uh, so that that's the most important part. So okay. so so to your listeners, because I know you have a lot of young listeners, maybe in transition, work yeah. career transition, going yeah. to a new role of some sort. The yeah. the honestly, the biggest thing and the biggest advice is to uh, per your personal development. Your personal development is key mm -hmm. to if you want to lead anybody. It, you got to lead yourself first. Yep, starts there. It starts with mm -hmm. ourselves. It starts with, you know, reading a book. It starts with putting, surrounding yourself with the right people. Uh, so there's little things that you can start to do today. Um, and if you've never even picked up a book, you're not even a book reader. I was not a big book reader, but you find even just a few pages a day, wake up in the morning, have some type of routine that you can be consistent and read a few pages. Mm -hmm. And by, you know, by the end of a few weeks, months, however, you know, you'll be in, oh, look at that. I, I read a full book. And put it into practice, right? Yes. Put it into practice. No shelf help. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you read it and you put it back on a shelf. No. Yeah. Well, you can only give it the level of your own growth. You know, as a leader, you've got to yeah. do that. Yeah. And even if you're not a leader in a title, we're, mm -hmm. we're all leaders in some fashion, whether it's our home, ourselves, mm -hmm other people, the community, whatever it is you do, even at work, if you're not a leader in title, you still can lead those that you work with yeah. by influence, right? And you can't yeah. do that if you're not developing yourself first. You're just, mm -hmm. It's just not possible. Yeah. Um, that's You don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. Until you get the help that you need or you get some, uh, you, you grow yourself, you know, in order to, to grow yourself. You have to, you have to know yourself first.